Hello and welcome to Information Technology Fundamentals. We're going to be covering a working with operating systems in this lecture. Uh, the objective here is to uh, talk about the different types of operating systems for workstations, servers, mobile devices, uh, embedded systems, and virtualization. And we're going to identify some commonly used operating systems, both uh, that are free and that we pay for. And lastly, we're going to cover using a browser to visit websites. Let's begin by defining the function and purpose of an operating system. So every computer requires an operating system in order to function. It provides the interface between the hardware application programs and the user. The, the operating system handles many basic system functions and interaction with the hardware and input output. Uh, as I stated in the previous video, it is kind of like the middle of the Oreo cookie uh, with one shell being the operating or the hardware and the other shell being the uh, applications. And the white center is the operating system. So there's two different ways we can interact with the operating system. One is through the shell or uh, command line, which is text-based, and the other is through the graphical user interface, which is what most people are used to using. We do use the command line frequently as you progress through uh, IT courses as it gives you access to more commands and in some situations it can be a little faster and it also gives us the ability to write um, short programs in order to uh, uh, in Windows are called batch files in order to do repetitive functions over and over again. The operating system is built off of something called a kernel which is its core functions. It interacts with drivers which connect to the hardware and utility applications. Now uh, our operating systems come in 32-bit and 64-bit versions which just describes um, how the CPU uh, addresses memory. So 64-bit can address a lot more memory. And currently most operating systems that are used on computers and workstations are 64-bit. There are some exceptions, but that is um, well, the current state. Uh, but 32 and 64-bit can also have a direct impact on application compatibility. A 64-bit can run 32-bit programs, but a 32-bit operating system cannot run 64-bit. The operating system uh, also gives us access to the system health and system functionality features built into it. As we progress through this course and other courses, we'll dive a little bit deeper into those subjects. Uh, the other thing an operating system gives us is the ability to manage our data in the form of files and folders and to keep things organized. So when we press the save button and we tell it what folder to put things in, the operating system is controlling that. When we talk about operating systems, we're going to divide them into three uh, types of devices. One is a workstation or client. Typical examples of that would be Microsoft Windows 10, Apple OS, Linux, and the Chrome operating system. Some of these operating systems have the ability to work with a domain controller and be in a client and server environment and for example the Chrome OS is designed to work uh, and connect with the uh, internet with Google's um, Google Google services. Mobile devices uh, most people are familiar with are going to be Apple iOS and Android. They're tied specifically, uh, Apple in particular is tied specifically to a, a set of hardware. Android can run on many many different types of hardware and frequently manufacturers make their own builds or versions of Android to work with their hardware hardware. And lastly, we have uh, server operating systems, uh, Windows Server, Linux, or Unix. These are designed to um, work with workstations and, as they say, serve up different uh, features. Uh, typical, typical ones would be uh, file service, uh, domain controllers, 
uh, printer services, application servers, uh, and they're frequently more expensive and run on much more robust hardware than a workstation or mobile device. We can further divide operating systems up by either commercial or open source. Commercial really means that you're paying to purchase a license. Uh, there's a proprietary code, uh, meaning the uh, source code of, of the uh, operating system is kept secret by the vendor. Uh, typical examples of this are going to be Microsoft Windows, Apple Mac OS, Apple iOS. And then we have open source operating system where the code is freely published and can be reused and customized to devices and um, applications. Um, they might still be part of a commercial product, but they are an open source to begin with. Uh, Unix, Linux, and Android are the examples of this. An embedded operating system is frequently used, uh, the classic place it's used in, is in IoT, but they are uh, an, uh, a computer, or sometimes we'd call it an appliance, designed for a very specific function, such as a security camera or something like this. The systems will have a small microprocessor, and then they'll have some type of memory uh, that holds the operating system. Uh, built specifically for that device. Uh, they're typically going to be in something we call a static environment. It doesn't change very often. Um, they might have a time sense of uh, in operation and have a requirement to a very high reliability. Sometimes these are re referred to as real-time operating systems. Firmware is uh, software that is embedded in an, a device. It provides the functionality for interacting with the device hardware. Uh, it's called firmware because it, it doesn't change very often, and it can support updates, but it's not updated very often. On a computer, the example of this would be the BIOS or UEFI. Uh, if you look at a printer, for example, they'll have uh, embedded... Um, embedded firmware too with a few more features but even if we went to something fairly simple like a network adapter it also has uh, firmware and it is there when you first start up the computer uh, or device whatever it is it's the first thing that loads to get everything started Virtualization is a very important concept in computing right now. Uh, in terms of computers, it really gives us the ability to run multiple operating systems on a single set of hardware, in that we're going to have something called a host computer, and then we're going to have a guest computer. There are two types of virtualization uh, that a hypervisor can use. Type 1 is called bare metal, where the the uh, virtualization OS is installed directly on the hardware. And type 2 is where you have a host uh, system to begin with, such as Microsoft Windows, and then it installs the hypervisor and allows operating systems to be installed over the top of it. So the host computer is the one that has the hardware and the guest or virtual machine is are the ex, the additional virtual machines that are installed on it. Microsoft Windows is uh, probably the uh, most popular uh, operating system right now. It runs on uh, about 90% of desktops and lot laptops. It has a client and server edition, and it has been released in many different versions over the years. Uh, Windows 10 is the current uh, Microsoft release. It first was released in 2015, and twice a year it's updated in the fall and in the spring. It's designed to run on many different pieces of hardware from PCs, laptops, uh, even smartphones, although that's largely fallen by the wayside, but there's definitely tab tablets and hybrids. In 2019, Windows 10 had about 50% of the market share in all operating systems for all devices. There are older versions of Windows that you might run into. If we go back, Windows 8 was before 10. There was no Windows 9. 
it wasn't liked very well, uh, and there are some specific upgrade paths. So for example, you have to go to Windows 8.1 to get to Windows 10. You can't go from Windows 8 to Windows 10, so we have a few few odd anomalies there. Windows 7, very popular, very stable version of Windows. Still, we'll find that around. Windows Vista from 2007 was never widely adopted as it required too many. Uh, at the time, the amount of resources to run it uh, made it run very slow. NXP, probably the most popular version of Windows ever, back from 2001, is still around and running on some devices. There are a multiple edition of Windows 10. Uh, there's a couple of uh, very important differences between them, and it really is the the versions that contain a domain controller, which gives the IT and a server environment, the IT department in a server environment, the ability to control and set uh, security standards on all the Windows 10 computers. And that would be the Windows 10 Pro Enterprise and Education models all support that. Windows 10 Home, which would be typically on a computer that you purchase at, say, uh, uh, your local Office Store, is going to not have a domain controller, which means the user is in charge of all security on there, and it won't be able to uh, interact with a server with a domain controller. Windows 10 also comes in 32 and 64-bit, although um, you're probably not going to find very many 32-bit versions of Windows out there. It'd be for a specific application at this point. Apple's Mac OS is only available on its hardware. Uh, it can only be uh, installed on there. You can't go and buy a version of Apple Mac OS and just um, put it on any piece of hardware. Uh, it has versions with it. The current version is Catalina, which is 10.15.6. That's the current version. Um, and the nice thing about the Apple Mac OS is once you buy your Apple hardware is it automatically updates to the next version and uh, it allows most users to keep a piece of Apple hardware for quite a long time before it becomes outdated. Apple iOS is its uh, mobile version. There's also now an Apple iPad. So they separated the phone and the uh, iPad operating systems. Uh, so now we have iOS, which is on 13, and we also have an iPad operating system specifically for tablets. Uh, again, like the Mac OS, it's automatically updated by Apple, and their hardware uh, tends to be compatible for a long period of time with the operating system. Unix, Linux, and Chrome are all open source. Um, they can be customized. You could find a whole different variety of them, of them out there. Um, and especially with Linux, you're going to see that the distributions have interesting names like Red Hat, Fedora, Debian. If we went into the security world, we're going to have Kali, Parrot, and some other ones. So these are all versions of Linux that have been customized for specific purposes. And Chrome OS will find on inexpensive computers it's also a version of Linux, but it's designed specifically to work with the web applications from Google. These are typically found at schools and um, education markets. Android is the other major mobile uh, operating system. It supports a much wider range of hardware. It can be used on smartphones, tablets, and um, some of the big vendors are listed here, Acer, Asus, Samsung, Sony. Uh, there are major and minor updates. Some of the updates are controlled by the hardware manufacturers, and some of them by Android. And this brings up uh, interacting with our operating system. Most importantly is our file explorer. We've already looked at that in the first two videos in this series. And here it is again. Uh, by now you should be becoming familiar with it and know your way around the file explorer. The control panel is the standard for accessing user configurable settings in Windows. You can see if we open up the control panel as in we have an example here. It has uh, things separated by category. 
there's also a list view um, in here. Now the control panel has been around since Windows XP and it has largely looked the same. But starting in Windows 10, they also added another interface called Windows Settings. You can see that it looks slightly different uh, but it gives you access to many of the same items. And again, these are user configurable uh, items. We're not going in into them individually at this point. Uh, some of them we've talked about already. For example, you can see the ease of access center down there on the left hand side. The ease of access center is there to help people use the um, computer more effectively, especially if you have some type of disability or perhaps you are just want to uh, use the on-screen keyboard, for example. Uh, there are some security reasons why you might prefer that over using the keyboard. So there's uh, several settings. You can see here we've got a magnifier, on-screen keyboard, narrator, and also a high contrast setup. There are many advanced management utilities in Windows. In this example, we have someone has right clicked on the start button and you can see we have some direct options to get into, for example, apps, features, power options, uh, device manager, networking. So those are right at your fingertip. Each of those console has many advanced configurations. Switching gears here a little bit, we're going to talk about web browsers. Web browsers are uh, one of the primary tools that most people use on their computer. It gives us access to the internet and uh, all types of different uh, connections. Modern web browsers use something called tabbed browsing, which you can see in this example. There's a separate tab up here and we can have many of those open, each of them on a separate web page. Uh, current, current browsers are Edge, uh, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. This slide lists Internet Explorer, but I really wouldn't advise anybody to use that currently. It's outdated and has many security risks. And the things we should know about a web browser uh, are, one, the tabs, two, the address bar up here at the top, and three, where our bookmarks are, and they usually are going to be right along with the uh, address bar across the top here, and of course, each browser has a different area to go uh, to the settings. If we look at a website, we'll see, a for example, uh, this www.amazon.com, that's called a URL, and the full web address here is https colon backslash backslash www.amazon.com. Uh, there are several parts to that, but that is how the computer knows where you want to go. Oftentimes when we get a document or we go to a web page, we'll find that there are something called hyperlinks, which will automatically take that um, URL and put it in our address bar and allow us to go there. I'm sure most people have worked with those frequently. There are some standard browser controls to use. Uh, up here at the top we have our back and forward buttons which tells us to go back one page or go forward a page. Helps us with some navigation. Uh, right here where we have the refresh circle if a page is loading that will actually turn into an X and it allows us to stop it. We should know the address bar here is at the top and how to set our home page through the settings menu. A quick review of what we've covered so far is we looked at the different types of operating systems both for workstations, server, mobile devices, embedded systems. We talked briefly about virtualization and we looked at the difference between commercial and open source operating systems and we finished up by reviewing some basic browser, browser use.